G'day friends, I'm going to walk you through the hard fault latch. This is a untested version 2.1 of the Neuracing uh, hard fault latch. You can get the design files here. So the, the reason this is untested is because we decided to move on to some more pressing problems. Uh, we already had a working uh, electromechanical hard fault latch and decided that a silicon one might have been a bit frivolous compared to the other problems we had to solve but I'll document it here for posterity. So just a quick circuit overview. On the left, we have the status inputs and outputs. These are the, uh, these are the error signals, say from the IMD, the BMS, the BSPD, and also a, uh, a buffered status output so that these signals can be safely read by other devices. And if there happens to be a wiring fault, a short there won't cause any problems. On the right hand side, we have the output relay. Zooming in now on the input side, uh, we basically have the same circuit replicated four times, once for each channel. So let's just have a look at one of the channels. If we take a look at the IMD status input, that's just going through an RC circuit, a pull down resistor and some uh, protection Zener clamping. So this whole circuit serves to basically protect the downstream logic. So downstream we have a CD4044 and that is a, uh, a quad NAND RS latch. So what we have is uh, four latches and the input signals are being sent to the reset line. This is an RS latch. So the reset input is the, is the input that dominates. All the set inputs are tied to the hard fault reset switch. So that means that you can push the hard fault reset button to reset these hard faults. However, if a fault is still present when you press that button, because this is an RS latch and the R input dominates, this, uh, the fault status will not be interrupted. If you have a fault and a persistent fault, you can press that button all day long and the fault will not be reset on the output. Looking a little closer at this reset circuit, we have the reset button just connected through a current limiting resistor just to keep things nice and safe. We also have the same Zener clamping and another resistor with onboard reset button. I figured that might be useful for commissioning in the lab. This capacitor not only, I guess, debounces, but also guarantees the power on state. So when you first power on the circuit, you can probably assume that this capacitor is empty. And so when you first power on the circuit, it will almost look as if this button is being pressed. And that just basically guarantees that the on state will be no faults on the output while ever there are no faults on the input. Of course, if for some reason there was a persistent fault on power up, that would still dominate. The intention here was so that you wouldn't have to press the reset button every time you power the car on. But I don't think that's really going to work out because the uh, battery management system, the BMS, while it powers on, it goes through seven seconds of faulting before it uh, has, has basically initialized. And so you will still have to push that hard fault reset button. So the output of our four latched uh, error signals all go through some OR logic. We'll come back to that. Now, because we're working with the LS series of logic here, uh, they're open collector outputs. So really you can connect all the outputs together and and those outputs together. So what this means is if any fault is present here, this anded output will be low. If there's any low signal here, then the output here will be low. And what does that do? That will turn off our shutdown circuit relay because the, because the gate here will get pulled down through whichever of these is low. If this output is low, this transistor will be off as well. And that will actually set this timer circuit to run because if this transistor is off, this enable line will get pulled high. And this is just a oscillating circuit to flash a fault lamp. So if you have um, a hard fault reset button with an integrated light, you could have that light flashing to tell you that the, there is a fault present. So that's really just like a, a quality of life 
inclusion there. Now what's going on with these OR gates? Well, not only are they being used to basically AND these signals together with their outputs, but the OR gates are being used for uh, some commissioning switches. So I've included provision for some onboard dip switches so that you can manually bypass any hard faults. Why might you want to do this? If you are commissioning the vehicle, you may have to commission out certain fault conditions. And so by toggling one of these switches on, you will drive the input to an OR gate high through that switch. And what that will do is basically force that output to always be on. So you basically rem can manually remove one by one any of the four fault conditions. And those are also uh, powering some onboard LEDs to illuminate the channel that you have decided to bypass, it's just so that you don't forget that you're, you're bypassing, say, the uh, BSPD fault. Returning to our latch, if we follow the latched outputs up now, we come to four channels of buffering. So this is just a quad op amp, and it's set up as a buffer. So it's basically just taking the signal and repeating it on the output, going through some resistance, and then that status signal is being sent back to our main status connector. So this is how the status signals are buffered out. And these are the latched status signals. So that, because these are downstream of the latch, these are, these are hard latched. So they can be sent off to illuminator lights or they can be data logged to show faults developing in the car and then pit crew interacting with those faults. And there's also uh, a, we pick up a resistor and LED for some onboard indication as well. So those are the major components of the circuit. We have the input, input protection, latch, commissioning logic for bypassing certain faults, and then output stage and status outputs. The only remaining thing is quite simply just the power. We have a power connector, some polarity protection, linear regulator, you know, standard fanfare there, and just some uh, bypassing capacitance for our logic chips. And finally, the other signals on board, there's another connector just for the hard fault reset button, the fault lamp, and the shutdown circuit in and out. So there you have it. Hopefully now the, this circuit is clear enough that you can take the schematic and design a PCB for it if you choose to go for a solid state hard fault latch. In 2019, we decided to stick with the electromechanical solution simply because it's very easy to understand and it's extremely robust. Relays, you know, they can handle, uh, they, they reject spurious noise on the, on the signal lines. However, it would be an interesting exercise to design the PCB for this circuit and commission it. There's probably a lot that can still be learned by building something like this. These circuit components are all quite modular, so they can be basically uh, included or not as desired. You, you could choose to not include the buffering. If you find that the idea of uh, the bypassing doesn't sit very well with you, you could always elect to just not uh, populate this component. By not including any of these components, then these inputs will always be pulled down to ground. So you can completely remove the commissioning switches just by unpopulating that switch. To reduce complexity, you can remove this entire status part of the circuit. This is just for quality of life. It's not strictly necessary for using the circuit, so that could go as well. So as you can see, it's, it's, not, as, uh, it's not as complicated as perhaps it looks at first blush. These are, these are all sections that have orthogonal functionality and can be commissioned in and out as needed. And that's all I have for you today. Hopefully that's clear enough for you to pick it up and run with. Best of luck.